What is up guys? My name is Lex. The last time we spoke, I was grinding it out in Vegas at the Bellagio. I'm back here in Florida and today's video is going to be a 510 no limit session I played at the Hard Rock. But before we get into today's hands, there is three very interesting, entertaining, exciting hands that I played earlier this week that I want to recap for you guys. The first of three hand recaps starts here on October 7th at 1.56 a.m. I get dealt in Jack 10 of hearts from middle position and raised to $75. The button calls 75 and the small blind calls as well. Three ways to queen of spades, queen of hearts, eight of hearts. I flop an inside straight draw, a flush draw, and a straight flush draw. When the action checks to me, I decide to check, hoping to check raise, but the button checks behind. Turn card, three of spades. Now small blind leads out for 100. I decide to call 100, and the button comes along with the call as well. Going here to the river, three ways, and it is the nine of hearts, giving us a straight flush. Unfortunately, the small blind decides to check over to me, and I think I could go with a big bet here or a small bet, and I decide to go with a smaller sizing of only $200. I pick a smaller sizing for a couple reasons. One, I think $200 can get hero called by a 9x or an 8x hand sometimes, and also by betting smaller here, I could even maybe induce a raise by a strong hand that's obviously not beating mine, maybe a smaller flush, potentially a straight, or even a slow played trips. Also by betting small here, I could potentially induce a bluff by someone who may have a blocker. So anyway, I throw out $200 and... We get some good news when the button decides to raise it up to 600 bucks. The small blind gets out of the way. The action's back over on me. Facing a $400 raise, I have to look at the board again. I blink my eyes a couple times. It's pretty late. Did I misread the board? Am I sure I have a straight flush? After about 10 seconds of studying the board and studying my hand, I realize, yes, I have the best hand you can possibly have on this board. A raise is definitely incoming. He has about $700 left, and I think the only sizing here is to go all in. So I rip it all in, and he doesn't snap fold right away. He doesn't snap call right away. He looks pretty discouraged. He asks me if I have a flush, which makes me feel like he doesn't even have a flush himself. Maybe trips or a straight, and eventually he puts in the chips, and of course... Our straight flush is good, and we end up taking down a pretty big pot here. It's extremely hard to make a straight flush, and it's also very hard to win a big pot as well. Moving on to the next hand, which actually happens only 10 minutes later on the same night. There's a cutoff raise to 50, and I have pocket kings in the small blind. I 3-bet to 210 bucks, and he makes the call. Heads up, out of position with pocket kings, and the flop comes 9-king-king. King. I swear, back-to-back... -back, Huge hands, we end up flopping quads. I continue for a small bet of $100, and now the cutoff with about $2,000 left in his stack instantly raises me here to $400. What's happening in these last two hands is something very, very rare in poker. It's very rare that you make a really strong hand like quads or a straight flush, and it's also very rare that you get raised as well. Last hand, I rivered a straight flush and got raised on the river, and now I flop quads and I get raised here on the flop. Now, it's a very interesting situation here. With about $1,600 left in his stack, I think my only option here is to call his raise. I think a lot of the time he's going to be bluffing, given the fact that I'm holding, obviously, all the kings. Let's say I had a hand like pocket nines or ace king. I think I would put in another raise here on the flop, but with quads... Not really scared of obviously anything. I'm just going to make the call and see what happens here on the turn. With a little over $1,200 in the middle, the fourth card is the 10 of diamonds. I check and flow over to the cutoff and he thinks for roughly 20 seconds and then ships his entire stack in there. I make the snap call and show the quads and the sickest part about this hand is my opponent shows Queen Jack for a straight on the turn. A sick cooler for him, and we just played some crazy pots back-to-back -back for some huge wild hands. The last hand recap I'm going to share with you guys is from the following day around midnight. I raise it up here with King Queen of Hearts to $35, and I get a call from the big blind. We go heads up to 9, 10, Jack, 2 hearts. I flop the absolute nuts with an open-ended straight flush draw and a royal flush draw as well. 
I know, it's just crazy. I mean, you can't get a better flop for my particular hand, basically. He checks, I bet $35, and he makes the call. Turn card, nine of hearts, another straight flush, back-to-back -back days. It's just crazy. He checks, I bet $125 now, and he makes the call again. All right, not too bad. River card is the deuce of spades. He checks for a third time. I bet out 300 and this time he folds. Of course, I have to show the table my straight flush. And the crazy thing is my opponent shows the eight of hearts. So he had an open-ended straight flush draw on the turn as well. Can you imagine a seven of hearts there on the river? Either way, two straight flushes and quads back to back, which leads us now into today's session. I walk into the hard rock, gonna play 5-10 no limit, buy in for $2,500. Let's get started. <laughs> the first hand I play it folds to me in the cutoff. I have ace queen offsuit and raised to $40. The button calls 40 and now the small blind re-raises me to 220 bucks. I do have some history with this small blind player. He has about $2,000 left in his stack and he seems to be three bet or folding a lot when he's playing out of position, meaning that he's going to have a pretty wide range here cutoff versus small blind when he three bets to 220 bucks. He can have some pocket pairs, some suited aces, offsuit aces, Broadway cards, suited connectors. So with all that being said, I think a 4-bet could be good in this situation. So I decide to re-raise here. I make it $625. My decisions are very player dependent. Let's say the small blind was a recreational player who hardly ever 3-bets preflop. I would probably just call with ace-queen or maybe even fold. But against this guy who 3-bets fairly often, I think this is a good spot to put in that 4-bet bluff with the ace-queen offsuit. I have blockers to strong hands like aces and queens and ace-king. And I could potentially get him to fold out a smaller pair or just a hand that has equity against us. After thinking for about a minute, he folds and we take this one down. Next up, there's a player to my left who has been limping a lot pre-flop and now he's in the under the gun position and raises to $90, a 9x raise size. The button calls 90 and I peel back pocket aces in the big blind. What a beautiful sight to see. Obviously, I'm gonna be putting in another raise here. A 9x raise size preflop should be a strong hand, so I bump it up to $400. I'm hoping he'll either call or maybe just rip his entire $1,500 stack in there. He thinks for about 30 to 40 seconds, and unfortunately, he folds, and the button folds as well. Unfortunate not to get really any more action there with pocket aces. Moving on to the next hand where the same player who 3-bet me earlier out of the small blind now raises under the gun to $35. The action folds all the way to me and the small blind and I peel back ace-king offsuit. Sometimes versus an under the gun open. This is a call and I decide to call here mostly looking to play pots with the big blind player who is a recreational player on my left. He ends up making the call as well, and we go three ways to an ace, eight, nine, two spade board. I flop top pair, top kicker. I check, big blind checks, and under the gun bets $70. With my hand being super underwrapped, I do think a check raise could be good here sometimes, but this is a very dynamic board, meaning that it's going to change a lot by the river. A lot of bad cards can come out on the turn that could either kill my action or potentially not really know where I'm at. So I decided to just call 70 and the big blind folds. So we're heads up to the seven of clubs on the turn. This is one of those cards which gets a little bit dicey. Some straights get there and some two pairs. I check and he continues now for a small bet of a hundred bucks. This bet size is interesting to me. When he bets $100 here, I don't think he has a very strong hand. I do think he'd be betting bigger if he had a straight two pair or a set. So considering this $100 bet, I actually think he has a hand like Ace-Queen, Ace-Jack, or Ace-10. Basically a bet that he can still get value from my worse hands that he doesn't really want to check back on the turn. I decide to call here just again, kind of plain and flow. I don't think a raise is necessary, and the river card is the five of clubs. This is the exact kind of run out I was talking about that could get pretty dicey. Now it's a one-liner straight to any six. The flush draw misses, and the action's over on me. 
On the turn when he bets $100 into a $250 pot on such a wet and dynamic board, I just didn't put him on a straight two pair or a set. I put him on an ace-x hand like ace-jack, ace-queen, or ace-10. So if I check this river, he's just going to be checking back all those ace-x hands that were beating. So I consider leading out here on this card. One, because I don't think he's really ever going to have many 6x holdings in his range after he bets the flop and the turn. Given the fact that he didn't bet that big on the turn, like I said before, I don't think he has jack 10 for a straight. I don't even really think he has a set or two pair either. So by leading out here on the river, I could potentially get him to level himself and call off with a worse hand, like ace jack or ace queen, thinking that I'm trying to use this board as a scary run out to try to bluff him off his potential hand. I decided to lead out for $350. When I bet this sizing on the river, I'm pretty polarized to a straight or nothing at all, which is why I think it's possible he could hero call me here with a worse hand. It's also possible he could fold out a better hand, maybe something like ace eight or eight nine for two pair, putting me on a straight like pocket sixes, six seven, a slow play jack 10, all those hands I could potentially play this exact same way. As you can see in the top left, he starts counting out his chips. I'm not sure if this is posturing, if he's trying to get a read off me, but in these kind of situations, I just try to look at the board, try not to give anything away, especially against good players who could potentially pick up on some tells. And after about 30 to 45 seconds, he decides to jam all in. Well, shit. That didn't work. I fold my ace king and he takes this one down. Poker is just a sick game where you're just constantly learning from your mistakes. Well, hopefully you're learning from your mistakes. And I feel like if you don't make mistakes, that means that you're kind of sedentary and you're not trying new things. I'm trying to get out of the box, trying to play poker a little bit differently. And I decided to go with kind of an unorthodox line there with ace king and we lost, but doesn't always mean it's the worst decision it just means that that time we lost either way i do feel like i can learn from this hand and try to play better next time if i'm in this particular situation moving along the cutoff player makes it 30 i have 9 10 of diamonds in the small blind i call and the big blind calls three ways to eight four deuce rainbow we completely miss i check big blind checks and cutoff bets 30 dollars now in this spot, I think a fold is definitely the right play. However, with my particular hand on this flop, I do think I can mix in a check raise sometimes. The reason for this is that he bets small on this board and I have a lot of backdoor draws that I could pick up. I don't wanna call and play passively. If I put in a check raise, I can get him to fold out some better hands and I can also set up some double and triple barrels if I pick up some more equity on the turn. Basically, any jack, 7, 9, 10, or diamond will give me more outs or potentially the best hand, so I decided to go with a raise of $115. The best case scenario here is that he see bet the flop with an ace high or a king high hand and he'll just fold versus this $115 bet, and the worst case scenario is that we get re-raised, but neither of those things happen, he decides to call. Okay, let's take this one to the turn, which is... One of those great cards for us, it's the Jack of Clubs. So not only is it an over card to the eight, it now gives us an open-ended straight draw. This is one of those cards where I'm definitely going to continue to put on the pressure here. And I'm probably just going to triple barrel off if I do get called here on the river. So I continue for $235. Just like I said on the flop, best case scenario, he folds. Worst case scenario, he re-raises me. And a middling scenario would be he calls. Now, of course, if he calls, we would love to get there on the river. But like I said before, depending on what the river card is, I'm probably just going to triple barrel bluff off here, trying to get him off an 8x hand, pocket 7s, pocket 9s. But luckily, it does not come to that when he folds on the turn and we take this one down with 10 high. So far this session, mixing some things up, putting in a four bet bluff, going with an unorthodox line with ace king, and then going with a check raise barrel turn with 10 nine of diamonds. We got that one through, so not too bad on the day. In this hand, the straddle is on and I have ace jack, folds to me in the small blind and I raise to $75 and the big blind defends. Heads up out of position to king, 10, queen, Two clubs, the absolute nuts for us, and backdoor nut flush draw. Now on this flop, I think a big bet will be good. 
If he has a pair, two pair straight draw, he's going to have to defend and make the call. So I bet $130. No action for us though. He folds. Fast forward about 30 to 40 minutes, and I'm in the small blind this time with Ace King suited. The $25 straddles on, and the hijack makes it 75. When the button calls, a great spot to squeeze here with such a strong hand, so I bump it up to $375. The initial raiser in the hijack has around $1,500 in his stack. If he goes all in, I'll have to call, but he decides to call. The button folds, so now we're heads up in a pretty sizable three bet pot with ace king of spades. Let's hit this flop one time. Well, the dealer decides one time is not this time. He puts out five, six, seven rainbow, not even one spade, just a disgusting board when you're holding ace king of spades. My opponent has about a thousand dollars left. I think about just jamming all in, but I think that would be a punt because he's just going to be calling with all of his pairs. And we probably have the best hand as well if he doesn't have a pair. So I'm just going to give up and check this one down. And he checks this back. We end up going here to the river and I win against King Queen of Hearts. Exactly one orbit later, straddles on and the button raises it up to 60. I peel back, pocket aces, red aces in the small blind. I bump it up to $225 and no action for us. Everybody folds, but to quote Kevin Malone from The Office, it's better to win a small pot than lose a big pot with pocket aces, so I can't complain. Under the gun, $25 straddle is off in this hand, unfortunately, and the early position player makes it $30. With Ace Jack of Hearts, I decide to go with a 3-bet here to $100. I watched him open up from early position with 5-6 of clubs just about an hour ago, which means his early position raising range isn't always going to be super nutted hands. He thinks for about 10 seconds and calls, so we're heads up in position to 9-4-4-1 one heart. I do completely miss, but I am going to see bet on this board, and I decide to go big. I make it $150, putting pressure on his smaller pocket pairs, getting him to fold out hands that have equity against us. I do have plans to continue to barrel on the turn card if we do pick up equity, something like an overcard to the 9, a heart for a flush draw, obviously an ace or a jack I'll continue to bet on, but it doesn't come to that. He eventually gives his cards back to the dealer, and this ends up being the last pot we play for this session. I end up racking up my chips, heading to the cage, and cashing out for the night. That is it for this one. Ended up getting in the game tonight for $2,700, cashing out for $5,200 and change for like a $2,500 profit. I am somewhat tilted though. This rarely ever happens when I'm filming for a poker vlog, but I was charging my phone away from the table. I looked down and I got pocket aces. Now my phone's like across the room and I don't have enough time to grab my phone, bring it back to the table and hit record. Uh, so I end up playing a big pot with pocket aces where I raised, a guy three bet me. With a short stack, I decided to flat call in position. Flop came out jack high, he bet the flop, he bet the turn, and he shoved the river. I just called, 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 and I ended up winning like a $3,000 pot there with aces that I wasn't able to get on camera, which hardly ever happens. But kind of tilting that I wasn't able to show you guys that, but uh, still a good day. Ended up profiting $2,500. Lately, I have been on somewhat of a boring poker streak. I don't know what you would call it, but I've had trouble making content. I've tried to film, uh, so I was in Vegas last week, and I tried to film a few times in Vegas, and I just couldn't get enough content. I just couldn't get enough exciting hands, uh, enough interesting hands, so I had to scrap like one vlog I was making out in Vegas just because it was like four hours of nothing. It was like raising they all fold i pick up a hand everybody folds i pick up a hand i lose i pick up a hand i lose or win a small pot i don't know it's it's weird i think that happens sometimes in poker where you just go on these spells of boringness where you don't really like win any huge pots or lose any huge pots however i did show you guys the two straight flushes and the quads i had back to back so maybe i got all my exciting crazy entertaining hands out earlier this week and tonight was just kind of uh you know just a grinding, boring session, you know, nothing too crazy. Uh, some pre-flop plays, a uh, couple bluffs here and there. Uh, didn't win any big hands, didn't really lose any big hands either, but can't complain. Profited $2,500.
tonight. I'm going to be back in Florida for a while, probably most of October. I'm not sure what my travel plans are yet. I'm trying to travel like every six weeks to new areas. Uh, next up, I plan on trying to go northeast to like Washington, D.C., um, Pennsylvania, in that area, probably sometime like late October, November. But I don't know exactly sure what I'm going to be doing. Um, don't have any more announcements. Uh, going to be playing a tournament next weekend. Potentially we'll be filming that one. But just back here in Florida, grinding away, making some videos for you guys, trying to get more comfortable at this 51025, trying to build up the bankroll, trying to get better at poker, um, trying not to make mistakes, and taking you guys along with the ride. This is like vlog 145 or 144. It's pretty crazy been doing this for over a year and a half now over 140 vlogs and for those of you guys who have been here since day one i appreciate it if you picked up along the road and you just started watching halfway through or lately i also appreciate it i'm really trying to get to 50,000 subscribers that's my goal try to get me there if you watch the videos you're not subscribed hit the button also comment like it helps grow the channel but that's it for this one i'm gonna go home hang out with my little puppy eat some food until next time, I'll see you.